Welcome everyone, video lesson number two, Mr. Pasco here. Today we are going to answer the question, how can we use ratio tables to find equivalent ratios? You can see in example number one, we have a vertical ratio table where we're gonna see relationships between pumpkin pie spice and pancake mix. And in, in example number two, we have a lawn mowing business that we are going to look into and this is going to be done with a horizontal ratio table. Let's get right into it. Example number one, to make pumpkin pancakes, you need to mix two tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice for every three cups of pancake mix. How many tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice do you need to mix with 12 cups of pancake mix to make pumpkin pancakes? We see that the ratio of tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice to pancake mix is two to three. We need to figure out how many tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice we need to mix with 12 cups of pancake mix. So we started this ratio table already where we have two tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice, three cups of pancake mix, four tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice, six cups of pancake mix. This relationship is going to stay constant. That means for every two tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice, we need to add three cups of pancake mix. So let's go ahead and do that. If we were to add two more tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice, we would have six. Now, in the right column, we have to add three more cups of pancake mix, which is nine. Okay, and of course, it continues one more time. If we were to add two more table, uh, tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice, we'd have to add yet another three cups of pancake mix. So the question asks us, how many tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice do we need if we were to have 12 cups of pancake mix? Well, we need eight tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice. So that's our answer for the first one. Take a look. It says using the information from the table, write four equivalent ratios. Well, we knew that the original ratio was two to three. But we also found three other ratios that are equivalent to two to three. And those are four to six, six to nine, and eight to 12. Those are four equivalent ratios. We can see the relationship between these equivalent ratios using repeated addition. So I can see that two plus two is four, plus two is six, plus two is eight. So for every time that we add two, we have to add three cups of pancake mix. And sure enough, that ratio remains constant all of the way through. Similar to repeated addition, we can also see relationships between equivalent ratios using multiplication. Two times two is four. Whatever I do to the left side, I have to do to the right. Three times two is six. Let's continue this pattern all the way down. Two times three is six. That means that three and there we go, times three is nine. Lastly, if I were to go all the way to the end here, um, we'll go like this, two times four is eight, and sure enough, three times four is 12. So we can make equivalent ratios either through repeated addition or multiplication. Let's move to example two. Stan mows lawns during his summer vacation to earn money. He took 12 hours last week to mow eight lawns. At this rate, how many lawns could he mow in 42 hours? We know that the ratio of number of hours to the number of lawns is 12 to eight. 
we need to figure out how many lawns Stan can mow in 42 hours. Now, I'm looking at this ratio of 12 to 8. We eventually need to get to 42 hours. The problem here is I can't think off the top of my head 12 times something is 42. So sometimes it's easier to break this ratio down into a more simplified ratio so that we can build it back up. Now there's a number of ways that we can do this, but what I'd like to do is if we divide the number of hours, 12, by two, we'll get six. In order to keep our ratio equivalent, we have to do the same thing to the number of lawns. So eight divided by two is four. We now have a new equivalent ratio of six to four. Some of you can see the multiplication relationship between six and 42. What I'd like to do is I'd like to continue to complete this chart and then we can investigate that relationship. So if for every six hours we mow four lawns using repeated addition, I know that 18 hours Stan mows 12 lawns. Add six more and I end up getting 24 hours, I end up getting 16 lawns. This pattern continues all the way through. And then lastly, if we have 36 hours, 24 lawns, let's add six more hours to get to 42, and let's add four more lawns to get to 28. Now my question for you guys is, did you see the multiplication relationship between six hours and 42 hours, and four lawns and 28 lawns? I hope you did. I can see that six times seven is 42, and four times seven is 28. So Stan can mow 28 lawns in 42 hours. In this case, we made a total of seven equivalent ratios, starting at six to four and ending at 42 to 28. So that's video lesson number two on ratio tables and equivalent ratios. I hope you're able to answer our question of the day, how can we use ratio tables to find equivalent ratios? We were able to define an equivalent ratio of two or more ratios that express the same relationship between the numbers. We were able to see equivalent ratios on a vertical ratio table and a horizontal ratio table. So there it is. I hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you next class.